Hey guys, it's Chris from Body Mass Composition Testing, and today we're going to go over how to read a DEXA and use that information uh, to improve your fitness levels. All right, so we're going to go over a sample DEXA scan. Um, this one just happens to be my wife, Virginia, who's also a co-owner of Body Mass. Uh, she's a competitive bodybuilder, so the numbers that you're going to see on this report are not reflective of most people, even really fit people, this is kind of the lowest of the low. So if your numbers don't, don't look like Virginia's, don't worry about it, mine don't either. Um, but it kind of shows us that you can be a regular person just getting into fitness, or you can be a professional bodybuilder um, who's trying to win a competition. It doesn't matter, we can use the same data to really drive changes. So again, ignore the numbers, uh, they're not realistic, but we're gonna dig through it and talk about how you can use it um, to, to move your fitness goals forward. So the first sheet we're gonna look at um, is going to have all of our baseline data. So baseline data is gonna be the information that you get during your first scan, and that's what we're gonna compare almost everything back to from scan to scan. So we really try to encourage people to look at the DEXA uh, results over a long term, uh, not just the short term. Short term, short, short term changes are really, really good, but sometimes they're so minute that people get discouraged. We want you to look at them over an extended period of time and you can see these big changes happen just through consistency. So on the first page, the first number we're gonna pay attention to is going to be the tissue percent fat. So for Virginia, tissue percent fat is going to be 10.6%. So tissue percent fat is going to be um, your overall body fat percentage number. Uh, the way we calculate tissue percent fat is we take our overall fat pounds and then we're dividing it by our tissue pounds. So tissue pounds is gonna be your weight minus your bone. And we'll go into how do we calculate that a little bit later. But just think tissue percent, it's gonna be the overall body fat percentage number. For her, it's gonna be 10.6%. Um, it then gives us a percentile. So percentile is gonna compare us to um, other people that look like you that have scanned with the GE-DEXA scan. So for Virginia, it's other 35-year-old white females who have scanned with the GE-DEXA scan across the world. We don't know who that population is. We're not privy to that info. So it could be one person, it could be a million, they could be all overweight, they could all be bodybuilders. So we tend to ignore that number. Um, but Virginia's in the first percentile, so she would scan better than 99 out of 100 people. So again, shows you how low 10.6% body fat is. Uh, next number we're gonna look at is gonna be total mass. So total mass is going to be your overall weight. Uh, DEXA scan weighs you every time you get on the machine. Uh, next number after that is gonna be your fat pounds. Fat pounds, pretty simple, is what it is. Um, it's a number that we always wanna see drop. But the other number that we're gonna pay attention to is going to be your lean pounds. So lean pounds, we're gonna talk about it like it's muscle. But it's important to know that it also includes everything that's not bone and not fat. So muscle, uh, connective tissue, organs, food, water, blood, and stuff called glycogen, body breaks down carbs, um, turns it into energy for the muscles. So uh, for a normal person, those things don't really change. Only big thing that's going to change over time is going to be muscle. So when we're talking about lean mass uh, changing, we're talking about it like it's muscle changing. The last number that we're going to see there is going to be your BMC. Your BMC is going to be your bone mineral content. Um, so that's just how much your bones weigh. So it's usually pretty surprising. Bones are usually lighter than what we would think it would be. Uh, I think the highest we've ever seen is 10.4 pounds of bone. That's on a really tall, uh, really big guy. So can we're gonna dig a little bit deeper into that in a little bit, but remember BMC gonna be bone mineral content. So kind of baseline numbers here, tissue percent fat, total mass, which is gonna be weight, 
then we're gonna get into fat pounds. Lean, remember when we talk about lean, we're talking about it like it's muscle, and then BMC is going to be bone mineral content. Um, once we get to our next page, our next page is gonna give us a much more in-depth breakdown. Um, it's gonna include a lot of the same information from the first page. So we're gonna get the tissue percent fat, uh, total mass, we're gonna get fat pounds, lean pounds, bone, and then we're gonna get a new number which is called your fat-free pounds. The reason that we need the fat-free pounds is that we're gonna chart that or plot points on a chart right above it. So if you look at your chart, there's going to be a line graph at the top. It's gonna to plot two points. The first point is going to be the fat pounds, and that's gonna be the black line. Fat pounds are in relation to the left side of the chart. So if you're looking at Virginia's, uh, Virginia has 13.7 pounds of fat. So you can see the far right point on her chart. She's done a lot of DEXA, so she's got a lot of points. Um, the fat-free pounds is gonna be the pink line. Uh, she has 122 pounds of fat-free, so that's in relation to the right side of the chart. So think fat pounds, use the numbers on the left, and it's gonna be the black line. Uh, fat-free pounds, use the number on the right. That's gonna be the pink line. Fat-free, it's made up of lean plus your bone. So if we had no fat, which you know is impossible, uh, fat-free is what we would weigh. Again, bone, it doesn't really change. Once we are 20 years old, our bone density is 90% developed, pretty much stays the same until we hit our 50s or 60s, then it will slowly decline. So because lean is made up, uh, fat-free is made up of lean and bone, if we see a change in our lean, we're assuming that change comes from muscle. So, more of a story, going back to the chart, we want to see the black line going down, pink line going up. If we see that happen, we know you've done what you need to do, we're increasing our lean mass, we're decreasing our fat mass, um, and if that doesn't happen, then we can use the DEXA scan data to help make an intervention, an educated change. So we've kind of gone over that first chart with all the data. Um, right below it, we're going to get our last big chart on this page, and it's going to have our fat distribution. So we're gonna look at two different areas of the body um, from a health perspective. You can also apply it to aesthetics as well. The first area is gonna be the android region. So android region, uh, we're just gonna call it midsection. So top of the region is basically if we drew a line around your waist at your belly button. Bottom part of the region is gonna be if we drew a line around your waist at your hip bone. So think about that kind of spare tire uh, fat that we see on a lot of men. Android is midsection, gynoid is gonna be more hips and glutes. So think bottom of the android area basically down to the bottom of your glutes. Uh, women, you guys tend to hold more of your fat there as opposed to men who tend to have more uh, in, in our android. Problem with the android region is the android is made up of a lot of our visceral fat. So visceral fat, think the fat that's deep inside you, within your body, um, usually reflective of poor lifestyle, diet, um, stress, hormones, all those type of things. So. We really, really want to see that Android region come down um, because when that Android trends worse, if it gets continues to grow, it's a red flag for all sorts of health problems like heart disease, diabetes, that type of stuff. So I always tell people if there's one number that we need to look at in terms of overall health, it's going to be that Android region. Gynoid, hips and glutes, most of it's subcutaneous fat. It's fat that's just below the skin. Um, do we want to get rid of our uh, gynoid fat? Sh sure, absolutely. But are we really concerned if it doesn't happen or if it goes up a little? No, not from a health perspective. That subcutaneous fat, it's not as risky as the visceral stuff. So do we want to lose it? Yes, but are we as concerned with it as the android? No. Um, so, especially for men, I think our big goal is to have an android to gynoid ratio of less than one. So if you see the A slash G, we're doing a ratio of the android number to the gynoid. So we want a ratio of less than one, meaning that the android percentage is lower than the gynoid percentage. So Virginia, obviously very lean, is also a female, um, so she's going to have a lower 
Android to gynoid ratio, but being 0.44, that's pretty crazy. We just need you to get down below one. So uh, last little chart on there that we like to throw out the window is going to be your BMI. Um, BMI is your body mass index. It's just a factor of height versus weight. So it says at a certain height, you should weigh a certain amount. Uh, the problem with that is it doesn't distinguish what that weight is made up of. So Virginia could be five foot seven, 135 pounds with 2% body fat, 20% body fat or 40% body fat should have the same BMI score. It doesn't make sense. Weight is not uh, all the same. We also pay attention to it or don't pay attention to it because we want you to increase weight as long as that weight is lean mass. So if Virginia put on 10 pounds of lean, her BMI score is going to get worse. That doesn't make sense to us. So throw it out the window for fitness purposes. Um, we're hoping you put on some weight as long again as it's good weight. All right, last page in terms of body composition here is going to be our enhanced analysis. So that's going to be the page um, that has all these numbers on it. It's going to break our body down into different regions. So the DEXA, um, along with BOD, POD, hydrostatic weighing, give us a really overall accurate body fat percentage number. But the DEXA separates itself a little because it can break the body down um, into regions. Those other tools can't. So regions are going to be our arms, our legs, our trunk, and then we get to see the android and gynoid again. Arms and legs, pretty self-explanatory. Think about trunk as if we cut off our arms and legs and head, it's going to be everything that's left over in the middle. So most of our upper body and torso. It then breaks those regions down into right side versus left side, and we'll talk about why that's important. It shows us the tissue percent fat for that area, uh, for each area, fat pounds, lean pounds, bone. We're solely gonna focus on the fat pounds and the lean pounds. Uh, fat pounds, can't really control where we lose fat. Our body loses fat wherever it wants, but we can see where that fat comes off. We can also look at the Android region and see how many pounds of fat we have. Um, and we can see those changes as we start to lose fat. Um, so Virginia only has 0.4 pounds of fat. so. Again, not a realistic number, but she doesn't have a lot to lose, but we want to drive that number down even further through diet and all those other factors. Uh, lean mass though, we can influence, right? So if we want to build more muscle, we can strength train and build more muscle. So the DEXA can be used in a couple of ways in terms of measuring lean and, and balances. So number one, uh, we can see if we can get hypertrophy. So if you want bigger arms, you do a DEXA scan, you go do a program that's supposed to build hypertrophy, build bigger muscles, you come back, you see if it worked. If it didn't work, then we look at what you do uh, and we figure out, hey, that didn't work. What are, what's the variable we need to change? So it might be changing sets, reps, uh, weight, all that detail. But we can see if it worked. If it worked, we call it uh, validating. It says keep doing what you're doing, it's working. If it didn't work, it's an intervention. We look at the data and we figure out what do we change to try and get results. We can keep doing this till we get what we need. Um, the other thing that it really shows is going to be our imbalances from right side to left side in a joint. And when we talk about in, our inner region, when we talk about imbalances, we're talking about muscular imbalances. So do we have more muscle on one leg than the other? Uh, if we see those imbalances trend worse, again, trend worse being does the imbalance get worse over two, three scans? Uh, then we start to worry a little bit. You shouldn't be building more muscle on one side of a region than the other. If we start to see that happen, it raises a red flag, something goofy is going on. It could be a mobility problem, an activation problem. Uh, you can need to learn how to do exercises better. It doesn't tell us the answer, but it leads us to ask more questions and try and find a solution. Um, before you get hurt, you can't keep training, and then it's harder to get results. So again, lean, uh, we can validate hypertrophy, and we can also search for some imbalances, make sure those imbalances aren't getting worse over time. All right, if this was helpful and you liked this video, uh, please leave your questions in the comments below and we can get back to you. If you want to schedule a DEXA at any of our locations, uh, go to bodymasscompositiontesting.com, click locations, uh, pick the one that's closest to you. We can get you in, do a DEXA, and then you can start 
uh, to improve your fitness using the data that we can help you provide.